All right, so the, the GOP and, and their whole crime, 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 they've been attacking uh, Washington, D.C., attacking uh, Mary Miro Bowser, saying they don't know what the hell they're doing. Well, there was a hearing yesterday on Capitol Hill, and was more than usual. Uh, but uh, con uh, Congresswoman Jasmine Crockett from uh, Texas, uh, she actually, my Congresswoman, I'm still registered to vote there, uh, let's just say she used her five minutes uh, to bring the heat to the Republican Party and was even checking them to their faces. Oh, this is good, y'all. This is good. As is Ms. Crockett from Texas for five minutes. Thank you. I don't know that I can get through all that I need to say in five minutes, but I'm going to do my best. Um, we're going to start off with, with sexual abuse. I am so excited that my colleagues across the aisle care about sexual abuse, considering that the front runner right now for, like, presidency is kind of just been found liable of sexual abuse. So I'm excited because this may mean that finally um, some folk will back off from supporting him because we don't support sexual abusers in, in this chamber. So I'm happy about this. But let's talk about facts versus fiction. Um, my Republican colleagues want to talk about being tough on crime and keeping cr criminals off the streets. Um, and so we've talked about, uh, let, let's talk about what is, what is criminal. Uh, we've got members of Congress elected in other states, other cities, trying to subvert democracy and the will of the people of D.C. by dictating that the city act in a way the Republicans want because they think they know what's best. Republicans want to subvert the people's power, and it's not just for D.C. It's all over. We see this in states like Texas and North Carolina with gerrymandering. In fact, we still have members here who still think that Trump won in 2020. Republicans want to talk about crime and violence, but they don't want to admit their role in this crisis. The fact is that they still allow assault weapon weapons in the hands of radical right extremists, which have forced families visiting a mall in my state of Texas to leave a mall with nothing more than trauma, hurt, and despair as a neo-Nazi terrorized them. And yet, what did they have in their hand? another AR-15, but we don't want to have a conversation about that. So if we're going to talk about crime and the reasons for the increase in them, we've got to talk about these root causes. Number one, the fact that we have elected legislators that won't do their job and protect people by keeping these weapons off the streets. That's number one. Number two, we are still reeling from a financial crisis. And guess what? They don't want to make it better. I'm sure they all campaigned and said, oh, we're going to help out the economy post-COVID. But right now, we are on a cliff over the debt ceiling. Mm -hmm. The debt ceiling that was raised three times under Trump and 25% of this credit card bill that they don't want to pay was accrued under Trump, and he only had one term. And hopefully he won't have no more. Mm. Nevertheless, I digress. Let me move on. So let's also talk about the fact that uh, just recently, I think it was yesterday or two days ago, we received reports that there is a staff member who's working for a Republican on this committee who has ties with and supports a white nationalist who has proclaimed himself to be just like Hitler. I don't really know what to say, except for the fact that this is a farce, all right? Because the fact is, We've got an increase in crime all over. If we really want to be real about it, let's talk about it. We're talking about D.C. right now, but the murder rates in red states like Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama have statistically exceeded those in blue states like Illinois, New Mexico, and Michigan every year since 2000. But since my colleagues feel the need to meddle in local affairs of D.C., then let's look at where there might be issues. To be clear, D.C. doesn't control most of its own post-arrest criminal justice system. Instead, the federal government administers most of it. So I have a few questions, yes or no, for you, Mayor Bowser. The federal government, not D.C., has the authority to prosecute nearly all crimes committed by adults under D.C. law. That's correct. The federal government appoints judges to the local D.C. courts. That's correct. The federal government has jurisdiction over community supervision and adults charged or convicted of D.C. crimes. That's correct. The federal government has jurisdiction over the incarceration of adults convicted of felonies under D.C. law. Correct. Lastly, Mayor Bowser, 
Isn't the federal government responsible for parole and supervised release of people convicted of felonies under DC law? Yes. Thank you. The fact is, my Republican colleagues want to talk about keeping DC streets crime free. They can't even keep the halls of Congress crime free because we don't we don't talk about this because I got 24 seconds. Mm -hmm. My freshman colleague has just been indicted on 13 counts, 13 felony counts, right? But have they exhibited any courage to say, you know what, we will disallow this in our body. We will make sure that we expel this individual. They have not. So what I don't want to hear is that they care about crime because if they did, they would start by cleaning up our own house and mind our own business instead of coming after D.C. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Congresswoman. Ooh, Rebecca, she was lit. You love to see it. You know, what she said was very important because I don't think most Americans understand that under um, home rule or the lack of home rule, D.C. basically um, their hands are tied in what they can and cannot do when it comes to um, responding to criminal activity and criminal arrest and criminal threats in the capital, um, in the capital city. But not only that. D.C. actually got together, worked with a lot of community act, uh, um, activists, advocates, as well as criminal justice reform experts to actually revise the D.C. criminal code. And they came up with something that ended up being a great product. But instead, we see that Congress is interfering with D.C.'s right to determine its own destiny, its right to determine how best to deal with crime um, within its borders. Instead, you see hypocrisy of the current Congress. Congress, who isn't paying attention, like Jasmine Crockett said, to what's happening within Congress. You literally have people who are indicted in this Congress but this Congress isn't doing anything. I think it's time for Speaker McCarthy to let us know, you know, are you pro-crime or are you anti-crime? They keep asking Democrats um, who are running for office um, in cities across the country if they're going to be hard on crime or soft on crime. I think it's time to ask Speaker McCarthy, are you going to be hard on crime or are you going to be soft on crime? You know, it, it was just hilarious just watching these nutcases, Joe, just, just drawing on and on and on. And... When Representative Crockett lays it out, they're trying to blame D.C. for something the federal government has control over. And guess what? They run government. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. Um, uh, perhaps prophetically in, in other parts of the country where there's a lot of uh, black majority rule, potentially, the state is now changing things where uh, they can come in and governor, govern, governor appointed folks uh, can take over for judges, can remove DAs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But the fact of the matter is, in D.C., they already have that control. They actually already get to sign off and have final say on much of what goes on in D.C. And so here comes D.C. with a plan that lends toward responsible self-determination, which is what they've been looking for for a long, long time. And really, they reject it out of hand just because they can't. So, uh, you know, so how are they not responsible, though, if they're the ones that have the last say? You know, so D.C. created its own problems, but, but D.C. doesn't actually get to enforce and bring about its own rules. You can't have it both ways. And if you are uh, anti-crime, if you are hard on crime or whatever else, start in your own body. You got some straight up thugs up in here walking up and down the hallways and you won't kick them because you're concerned that you're going to lose a seat in Congress. So, you know, you're going to have to uh, figure out what it is that you're going to do and uh, talk this, uh, walk this walk um, that's related to this talk. Uh, and uh, because at the end of the day, um, ultimately, D.C. is not in its own hands the way that it wants to be and desires to be. Why don't you let D.C. be in its own hands? And then once D.C. messes up, now you can start to make that a political thing and blame them. But if it's all laid at your feet and you're all ultimately responsible for it anyway, how are you pointing fingers at D.C. saying it's your fault even though I'm in charge. And, and you know what, uh, you know what, Robert? I mean, there are some dumb people, but there's no doubt in my mind that one of the absolute, undeniably dumbest people, now that Louis Gohmert is no longer in Congress, is this fool Clay Higgins from Louisiana. I mean, it, 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 listen to this hick. You think Bobert and Marjorie Taylor Greene are dumb? 
I, I think he dumb. He like Tommy Tuberville level dumb. Listen to this. You've just testified regarding your specific role, your personal role, in the days leading up to January 6th and the D.C. National Guard. Do you have counsel present, ma'am? No. Do you wish to amend your testimony in any way regarding what you, what you stated today? I do not. Very well. Mayor Bowser, you are the mayor of, of Washington, D.C., correct? I am. And Washington, D.C. is the capital of the United States of America, correct? It is. The capital is the, the home of the entire seat of our government, the executive branch, the legislative branch, the judicial branch. The president is here. The vice president is here. 435 congressional offices, 100 Senate offices, the Supreme Court. All departments of the government are headquartered here. All agencies are headquartered here. It, in your knowledge, in, you're a very intelligent American. You have a clear understanding of history. In your knowledge, ma'am, is there any other municipality in these United States that has access to our seat of government as the citizens of Washington, D.C.? Actually, they all have more access because they have voting members of Congress uh, I'll, and I'll ask senators. you to restrict your answers <laughs> to my question. So, let, so let's, let's, let's go there. Robert, uh, did they like, uh, let, let me remind you, no clapping allowed in hearings. Well, they were clapping because dumbass looked like a fool. Yeah, any uh, first year uh, mock trial professor can tell you when you're doing that type of quote unquote cross examination, don't ask open ended questions and don't ask questions you don't know the answer to. You have to make sure you box them in so there's only one answer, which should be a yes or no answer. And he got you know, somebody out lawyered him on the lawyering after he would end up very embarrassed. And, and this part of the issue that we have with Republicans right now, because you, as I mentioned earlier, you have the Durham report come out earlier. Earlier, earlier this week or last week, talking about uh, the issues with the FBI and uh, using flimsy evidence to go after Trump. Okay, fine. And you have Republicans, people like uh, Vivek, um, the guy running for president, can't pronounce his last name, uh, some other members of Congress saying, we need to abolish the FBI. We need to abolish law enforcement. We have to abolish the Department of Justice. Well, if that is your view on law enforcement when it comes to somebody uh, uh, pre potentially abusing President Trump, well, what about the way law enforcement has been treating black folks in this country for the last 400 years? When we march and say that we need to do something about over-policing in America, they say that we're calling for defunding the police. But when Donald Trump literally says we need to abolish the FBI and federal law enforcement because they're coming after me for all my crimes, somehow that is uh, backing the blue. That is being pro-law enforcement. These people don't think about things before they say them. They don't put any policy considerations into what they say. They don't care about hypocrisy or something stupid anymore. It's all about what plays well on conservative media, what makes a good soundbite for the podcast you go on, what gets you on a television show or a radio broadcast later on. And until we, we deal with this political situation of having the types of, these types of elected officials because of low black turnout, because we're not uh, voting in our uh, population number to put these people out of office, we're going to continue having these situations with a menagerie of idiots running this country. All right, folks, back to our my unfiltered video in just one moment. When you talk about blackness and what happens in black culture, we're about covering these things that matter to us, uh, speaking to our issues and concerns. This is a genuine people-powered movement. There's a lot of stuff that we're not getting. You get it, and you spread the word. We wish to plead our own cause too long have others spoken for us. We cannot tell our own story if we can't pay for it. This is about uh, covering us. Invest in black-owned media. Your dollars matter. We don't have to keep asking them to cover our stuff. So please support us in what we do, folks. We want to hit 2,000 people, $50 this month, raise $100,000. We're behind 100000 so we want to hit that. Y'all money makes this possible. Checks and money orders go to P.O. Box 57196, Washington, D.C., 20037-0196. The 
Cash app is dollar sign RM Unfiltered. PayPal is R Martin Unfiltered. Venmo is RM Unfiltered. Zelle is rolling at rollingsmartin.com. 